Welcome to Service Headline News. I'm your host, Marty Smith, and I'm joined by Eric Perrot. What's going on, fellas? And Jake Wall. What's going on, guys? We're here to bring you the latest headlines and updates pertinent to all servicemen and women. So sit back, get informed, and have a laugh as the Swearing It Podcast presents Service Headline News. Gentlemen, how are you today, this evening? <laughs> I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> We are the worst vampers <laughs> ever, you know? I mean, we got to, nobody's prepared to talk on Marty a podcast where all we do is talk. <laughs> We're always dicking around. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Eric, what do you got for us on a day in history today? Well, I wanted to point this out to Jake. So, Jake, <laughs> January 28th. 1986, my friend. Where were you? What were you doing? Uh, I was in school in Sisters, Oregon. Sisters, Oregon. School? Well, what what occurred. school? Uh, High school? Uh, no, uh, elementary. Elementary? <laughs> yeah, probably. Graduated in 96. I oh, graduated yeah. in 96. Yeah, that, elementary. Put you, that put you about second grade there. Yeah. January 28th, 1986, um, it, it was probably a pretty spectacular event for everybody. Um, that was when the Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart 73 seconds into its flight. It killed all its seven crew members. Uh, the spacecraft disintegrated at 46,000 feet above the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Cape Canaveral, Florida. 46,000. That's as high as it got, huh? Yep, 46,000 feet. Wow. It was the first fatal accident involving an American spacecraft in flight. The mission yeah, doesn't. That's right. Yeah, that was it. Was the first one, and I think there was a Russian disaster um, prior to this. I'm not sure what it was called though. Up so you're day. saying you're saying it went back? I mean, the because uh, who are the guys? Uh, I'm a terrible American. Who are the ones that died in the fire? But they died on the launch pad, right? When we were doing Apollo, was it Apollo or Mercury, the space program? Mm, I don't know. Remember, they died in the capsule when it caught fire. But that was uh, that was pre-launch. I don't think it launched yet, right? Um, so I don't know. These are the first ones that actually made it, at least off the pad. Forty-six thousand so feet isn't really special. right. I'm aware of this one. I'm also aware of the one with Houston. We've got a problem, <laughs> but they all survived. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> the mission was designated STS-51 Lima. It was the tenth flight for the orbiter and the twenty-fifth flight of the space shuttle fleet. The crew was scheduled to deploy a communication satellite and study Halley's comet wow. while they were in orbit. In addition to taking school teacher Krista McAuliffe, the latter resulted in a higher than usual media interest yeah. in coverage of the mission because of her. She being... was the first civilian, I think, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, and then all the schools were like, oh, a teacher's yeah, going into right. space. And, and I think we that's why they all had TVs it. in the classroom right. and all that stuff. Right, right. It was one of the biggest things, you know, seen on television of that scale. The cause of the disaster was the failure of both the primary and secondary redundant O-ring seals oh, in a joint man. in the shuttle's right solid rocket booster. That's An right. O-ring killed you. That is right. crazy. Right. Crazy. I was um, not in high school. <laughs> I was in the Air Force <laughs> stationed at Charleston, and I was coming in off the flight line to my training section and everybody in the training section was watching this thing. So I probably stayed there for an hour before going back on duty, watching this mess. I was, was I was between classes as a freshman at uh university of Colorado Boulder. And it was on and it, you know, it was on the news just being live and I kind of getting your shit together. And all of a sudden you're like, what just happened? It's kind of like, why did it do that? You know, your dumb, your dumb brain is like, it's not supposed to do that. Why did it do that? And then, because uh, well, I, I, I think it took them a few minutes to kind of figure out 
Oh yeah. man, this is catastrophic, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, because I mean, if I if I remember it right, uh didn't some of the didn't the uh um uh, the side boosters kind of continue on or something like that or yeah they did because uh if you look at the the actual like i don't know that famous picture where the yeah, cloud yeah, yeah. and the exhaust goes up it goes up and then there's a bigger chunk of exhaust and then it kind of wise out you so hope yeah that's you right that's right it was kind of confusing passed away quickly you know i'm hoping Man, can you imagine? I'm hoping the explosion kill oh, burst. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, right. You know? I think, didn't they just recently find some of the debris on the ocean bottom recently? Oh, I don't know. I didn't hear that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Think, was that the Challenger or was that the other one? I thought it was the Challenger. I know they oh. found some debris of something. Yeah, so November 10th, a large section of the dest- uh, destroyed space shuttle Challenger has been found buried in the sand at the bottom of the Atlantic oh, more wow. than three decades after the tragedy that killed the school teacher and six others. Oh my God. So they did find some of the debris. <laughs> but that was, that was uh challengers. Did you say the 10th? That was his 10th flight. Yes. I don't know why we discontinued yeah. that program to be honest with you. I mean, well, well I think we already knew that, that it was going the civilian route you know and then the thing is like elon came up everybody was like was everybody said oh we'll never be able to land a rocket you just let that go in space and that's just trash eventually it'll come in yeah. and then elon's like hold on <laughs> I, know. He's like, that I got good. this i'll blow up like 10 of them <laughs> on the launch pad but i got it we're getting it uh, good, good day in history. It wasn't military, but that was uh, that was pretty close, pretty significant. Um, yeah, pretty significant. Uh, okay, uh, let's go into a couple stories here. Oh, uh, by the way, you know there's a place that sells jet fuel scented candles. <laughs> I swear to God, there's a place that, that I it's ran so across it. Um, Hold on a second. Let me bring it up. Fucking JP8 in the house. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, I got it. I mean, I used to huff gasoline when I was a kid, too. <laughs> uh, and the warmest place for uh, when I was a Ford observer, the warmest <laughs> place was to stand behind a tank, right? And, and breathe that exhaust, but it was warm. So Billington Farms for twenty four dollars sells a jet fuel scented candle. <laughs> Smell smells like the sweet aroma of jet fuel. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You were talking about standing behind your tank. I remember there was a cop that actually killed himself. What? Sitting in a light all unit out on the flight. Yeah. Wait, what's that? that what, warnings. What? What's that? On the inside, carbon monoxide poison. Correct. He crawled in there to warm up, didn't come out. I got to be oh honest. I, I have crawled in one of those <laughs> to warm up in Alaska. Wait, w- wait, what is that? I don't know what it it's, is. It's just a light cart. Yeah. You know, it's they a, call them light all units. You can yeah, actually make the lights go. It's got go an on. engine and a generator. Yeah. And oh. then it's got a little hand crank that the little four by like football stadium lights go up. Yeah. Oh, okay. And how does that thing put off heat? The engine. Yeah, when it runs. Oh, it's a generator. Okay. It's, it's a awesome. generator. Oh, all right, yeah. all right. And so, you- but to be fair, we had two people. There was always, and we always had to keep the door open. And we rotated <laughs> well, in and out. <laughs> so, if you heard the thunk on the inside, the other person could pull him out. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, we never closed the. Uh, oh, okay. The door. Uh, oh, just another example of how bright we cops were at times. I'm assuming that was there's, a, there's a big warning on the inside. <laughs> there's a warning label on the inside of the door that says, don't crawl in here for heat and close the door. Yeah. Probably because of your cops. Yeah, I would, I would assume so. <laughs> so some might say they might be life-saving. Their <laughs> ignorance led to my life being there me still being here 
But why, again, why is that warning on there? It wasn't <laughs> on the there. It wasn't on there originally. They had to wait for that poor, sorry son of a bitch to die. <laughs> yep. They're like, ah, we got to put a sign up now. Stupid Don't cops. eat you, Tide Pods. <laughs> okay, you know. Jesus. Okay, uh, this was a story on the 31st, or just from today. A few days ago, we launched a, a hellfire or a drone attack against uh, some Al-Qaeda militants that we took them out, right? Well deserved. Turkish state-run news network reported that three suspected Al-Qaeda militants were killed in a U.S. drone strike in the Wadi Ubaida district of Yemen's Marib province. Based on photos of the scene of the strike, the target vehicle was shredded from the roof in rather than destroyed outright in an explosion, a telltale sign of a strike involving the U.S. government's secret AGM-114 R9X Hellfire missile. Hmm. The R9X variant of the Hellfire known as the quote-unquote Flying Ginsu or Ninja Bomb Features a kinetic warhead rather than an explosive payload, releasing a halo. That's not even a good idea. It just releases these (laughs) these arms that come out from the side of the body. Uh, Six blades that, upon impact, they eviscerate a target with greater precision than the large explosion. So It's supposed to to lower the uh, collateral damage of a target. Yeah, Yeah, it doesn't explode out. Sounds horrible, though. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, just this big whoomp, and then all of a sudden, you guys are gone. So, that's it. Does it sound it's for some reason it sounds worse than getting blown up? Kind of, kind of. I mean, I'm you're, you're both dead either way, I'm sure, in a matter right. of seconds, but it, man, that sounds horrible. So, this maybe was, with an explosion, your family can find what's left, and with this, not so much. I don't know. I I don't I don't think there's much left of anything, right? right? So you can see that on the screen, right? You can see this thing, yeah. and it's got the spines. That that's not a very good drawing. I've seen better drawings of it, um, but those things pop out from the side. They're recessed, and then they pop out, and they're much longer than the way this thing is. They say it's basically as long as the missile body, Jeez. and then it's wow. just this flying uh, kinetic weapon. So if you go back. Uh, let me bring this up. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's the roof of the car <laughs> that they were in. Just so, that is, yeah, that is. Just but, she's, but look at those triangular pieces. It's just pedaled like, out. Yeah. Just serrated, man. Um, so that's the side of it. Uh, so this thing just blasted everything in the middle of it, which is a hell of a shot, right? Wow. I mean, with the hellfire, even if you're off a little bit, at least you got the explosion to make up for it. This thing just just rocketed through the ceiling or the roof of that car. Jeez, How nuts. many ways can man kill a man? Uh, that's true. Yeah, we're we're pretty good at it. Eric and I had covered this yep. before uh, back in August, and that's when they killed uh, Zawahiri. With the same weapon, right? They just wow. say he was in the he was in a neighborhood, and this thing just pinpoint took him out. So good on us and our weapons, and bad for the enemy. No doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, okay, this next story uh, on January twentieth, this Navy Captain Royce Williams was awarded the Navy Cross, the service's second highest award for valor. For his heroic actions more than 70 years ago. So the story goes, uh, on November 18th, 1952, Royce Williams, flying his second mission of the day, took off from the USS Oriskany in a Grumman F-9F Panther as part of a combat air patrol mission over the Sea of Japan near the border with North Korea, China, and the Soviet Union. He says, we started rendezvous with each other as we climbed out of the clouds, and that's when we heard from the CIC, the Combat Information Center, that there were inbound bogeys from the north. So above Williams and the patrol were the contrails of seven MiG-15s, and at the time, it was one of the most advanced fighter jets in the sky. 
Uh, hmm. And it it had totally outclassed Williams Panther in speed, maneuverability, climb rate, and the weapons range. Uh, now, this is a story. I've, I've heard a couple different versions of it, so I'm just going to read this one. After the other three Panthers in Williams formation flew away, reporting mechanical malfunctions with their planes or otherwise disengaging with the enemy after, he was left flying alone against Soviet jets. Uh, climbing towards the Soviet jets, Williams fired at the last aircraft in the formation. He quickly found himself on the tail of a second jet and opened fire, bringing it down. With five Soviet jets remaining, Williams was now on the defensive, avoiding the diving attacks of the enemy jets and looking for chances where he could engage, all while keeping an eye on his fuel and ammunition levels. In more than 30 minutes of aerial combat, Williams shot down at least four MiGs, even though his own aircraft would eventually land with 263 holes in it. Oh, my goodness, man. Nursing his plane back to the Navy task force, Williams considered bailing out but told... Uh, the interviewers that I knew in that weather I wouldn't have survived in the time it took to find me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Sea of Japan or whatever it was. Forget it. So he he went up against Big Fifteens, the faggot, right? Was it Fifteens? <laughs> the what? name of the Big Fifteen. What did you just say? It's a faggot. The M <laughs> Big Fifteen is a faggot. <laughs> Man, that That's is, the name. We're getting, we're getting what busted for this are one. You talking about? I'm telling like it's the MiG 17 Farmer, the MiG 29 Fish Bed, MiG 15 yeah. had a name. It was Faggot. All right, now I got telling you, up. I'm not trying to be rude. You don't, you don't believe. Never, holy cow! You thought I was lying, didn't you? MiG 15. Oh my goodness! Yep, <laughs> <laughs> and that was NATO, a, a NATO the NATO code name. reporting name. <laughs> All oh of them. Oh my have. gosh! Maybe it was French. Maybe it was forgot. <laughs> okay, I'll I go mean, it is F A G O T, not F A G G O T. So we in the stinger world called it a faggot. Sorry, well, you yeah, ugly yeah, Americans, you. <laughs> oh, horrible. Here's the greatest the, uh, part. That's crazy. <laughs> when <laughs> yes, he was shooting at faggots. Uh <laughs> how do you you reluctantly <laughs> oh, yes, was Eric. <laughs> he was doing that. He got oh. four, he got four oh. of those faggots <laughs> out of the Jeez. seven. We're never, this is not going up at all. Oh, it's going. <laughs> We're going to make oh, a name for ourselves. Goodness. When Royce, or when Williams, it. when Williams was debriefed, he was quickly made aware of the real implications of what he had just done. With the Cold War in full swing, he had shot down actual Soviet jets. And unbeknownst to him <laughs> during the flight, he had been directed towards them based on a classified intelligence collection program from the National Security Agency. Oh, my goodness. The commander of the Naval Forces Far East told him to never discuss the engagement with anyone ever. And Williams was credited with a single confirmed kill while the rest were distributed among the other pilots who had avoided the engagement. Oh, uh, that's wrong. Not only did he get shorted out of his kills, but he t I told he couldn't talk about it. And they're like, oh, yeah, these other guys got to kill, too. That's crap. Man. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know if he could keep that quiet nowadays, right? Oh, that's crap. Uh, anyway, good on him. He got the he got the Navy Cross. Um, but here I'll show you this. Was that, was that his first combat involvement? Uh, no, no, I, I don't think so. I, I didn't talk about it. Um, okay. Whatever you think of Tom Cruise, right? He did a video in honor of this guy. And that's the story I just sent you, Jake. Yeah. Um, embedded in that story is a Twitter link to uh, Tom Cruise telling this guy, congratulations. It's pretty cool. Hello, Royce. It is my great honor and privilege to congratulate you on the occasion of your receiving the Navy Cross. Your grit and bravery 
I are simply astounding. You are a true American hero, and I offer you my most sincere thanks and congratulations to you, sir. That boy, Tom. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, he didn't there have to go. do that, so that was pretty. Yeah. That was pretty good. Oh, yeah. If you go back to Top Gun, and there's a scene <laughs> in Top Gun where he's telling the. Uh, he goes over to the senior instructor's house and the guy says, yeah, I flew with your old man. We mm-hmm. were in v- VF, whatever, however they do that, on the Ariskany. And he said, the aircraft carrier, the USS Ariskany. They were as thick as flies. And they were, no, they were, they were like fireflies all over the sky, right? <laughs> he got hit, but he saved the lives of three others before he made it or before he bought it. So, I'm telling you, that little scene has got to be uh, Captain Royce Williams' uh, mission. And it was their way of getting rid of three other guys that didn't take part in this mission with him. Yeah. So I, they did some blue. Yeah, they, it sure seems like it. Sure seems like it. So, um, but good on him. That's that's a hell of a that's a hell of a job. And to stay quiet for seventy years. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, continuing our all pro military selection. The last oh, what we do? Battleships first, which was the Iowa. Yeah, Iowa class. And then we did tanks last week, which we determined was the Sherman. Correct. Yep. Sherman. So this week is jet fighters, the best American jet fighters. So who, all right. All right. And we got quite a battle here. I think we have, we've narrowed it down to three. Well, because there's only three of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. Uh, I'll go first because we'll go in uh, chronological order here. All right. Well, consider right. blew it at us. So, <laughs> I have I have chosen the North American F-86 Sabre. Uh, in the early days of the Korean War, American pilots were having issues keeping up with the MiG-15s. What were those called again? Fago. <laughs> the Fagos now? <laughs> the Fagots? Fagots. <laughs> <laughs> the MiG 15s flown by the Soviet supported Chinese and North Koreans, while the Lockheed P 80 Shooting Star, which is a great name for a plane, that is right? kind of a cool one, put up a good fight. The North American F 86 Sabre soon emerged as a superior option. Um, it was produced by North American Aviation. The Sabre is best known as America's first swept wing fighter which could counter the similarly winged soviet mig-15 in high high speed dogfights over the skies of the korean war considered one of the best and most important fighter aircraft in the korean war the f-86 is also rated highly in comparison with fighters of other eras although it was developed in the late 40s and was outdated by the end of the 50s uh, the saber proved versatile and adaptable and continued as a frontline fighter in numerous air forces until the last active operational examples were retired by the Bolivian Air Force in 1994. Oh, Jeez, man. Uh, the F-86 was used extensively during the Korean War, participating in some of the earliest jet-to-jet air battles in history. In fact, it was so effective that many view it as one of the most important aircraft to fly during the conflict. Outside of Korea, the F-86 also saw action during the Cold War and the 1965, here we go, Jake, Indo-Pakistani War. <laughs> so those, uh-huh. We sell them all for those civil wars, Man, inter-country I, wars. Crazy. The, the more we do this, the more I realize we are a huge arms merchant. I, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Yeah, right. Those right. tanks, I was looking at the tanks history and so I was like, holy cow, this whole this tank just destroyed the whole Middle East. <laughs> and then I was looking at the Sherman, I'm like, this tank is used in South America half the time. <laughs> it's like, right. what is going on? These countries don't they don't make anything themselves, but they got enough money to buy it, I suppose. Yeah. All you need to do is join ITAR and have an export license. Yeah, yeah. right. 
Um, okay, so let's save let's save the uh, combat tallies until the end. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. So that's my choice: the F eighty six saber. All right, okay. I'm going with the F four Phantom. Oh, that's a beautiful blade. So this was like long range supersonic fighter and bomber, right? Right. Had a bunch of hard points um, for air to air, air to ground, like famously the wild weasels. Um, oh yeah, used yeah. you modified F fours. Um, they were the electronic. Uh, birds or whatever yep. right yeah they were they were the ones to do the sam hunts so oh, one yeah. of the original um electronics warfare kind of yeah air air to ground intercept teams they so that's, that was cool was it um, the fastest jet at the time or uh, fighter jet at the time um i think it was my got too, passed up it it was Mach 2.2, yeah. So early on, NASA actually experimented with the F-4 to see if the sonic boom oh. could be used as a weapon. <laughs> and they had they had a handful of F-4 Phantoms in the NASA inventory. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so it's versatile. It was used, majority of it was used Vietnam War. Um Sam hunting once Sam's come in to play. Um, and then later models, the first model wasn't, it didn't even have a Gatling gun. So later on, it got the M61 Vulcan rotary cannon. Damn. So if it didn't have any external munitions, then it was done. So. Yeah. Not, not real good for fighting air to air. Initially. And yeah, and it's so loud. It was so loud. Really? So, yeah, we we saw a handful of them. Actually, actually, they didn't go out of circulation. They were using them as target drones up until 2016. Oh, damn. Um, the U.S. Air Force, and then Japan didn't get rid of them. They finally retired them in in 2021. Wow, Jesus! So they were so around. It, Oh, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, introduced in 1961, and then retired in 2021. Jesus. So, yeah, it is a cool, cool looking plane. That's for sure. And it was used by Air Force Army or um, Air Force Navy and Marines, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was early on a, a very versatile cross branch. Not like we are today where, well, yeah. we're trying to get back to that, right? I but guess. I don't know. For a while, it, everybody had their own plane. You know, Air Force had the 16 and 15. Right, right. That's they true. Had, you know, the the Hornets, F-18 Hornet, and then the Super Hornet were Navy and Marines, and the F-14 was Navy. And the whole time, it was just five different air crimes. Yeah. So... And that I think the thirty five was supposed to bridge that gap, right? But yeah, it's, it's not really doing that, but I think it was intentionally supposed to do that. So, well, I I think mine that I chose tonight, the F fifteen, was to bridge that gap initially. The F fifteen? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, not to knock your F-4 down, but in 1967, the Soviet <laughs> Union unveiled the MiG-25. Oh. And it was commonly known as the Fox Bat, and it was far superior to the primary U.S. fighter jet of the time, the F-4 Phantom. The F yeah. Oh, yeah. So in comes the F-15 Eagle. Small, highly maneuverable jet plane designed to fly combat missions in all weather conditions. The thing couldn't be grounded. Its primary mission in maintaining your superiority. In other words, my friends, its ultimate purpose is to defeat other planes in aerial combat. <laughs> okay, I stress combat. <laughs> yeah. It was a badass airplane. 
How are they saying that's small? That's a big plane. Yeah, How that's a big plane. Small? The, the original was a, a one seater. You didn't get a Wizzo. Oh, it was. Oh, okay. And you didn't get a Wizzo until they started uh, making the F-15s mission more multi-purpose. Yeah. To yeah. Bombing ground, you know, support. Yeah. So the original F-15 Eagle was designed to handle air-to-air targets. Right. With right. Other planes. It wasn't built to bomb targets on the ground because the Air Force knew that the extra equipment would compromise the plane's aerial yeah. combat abilities. Yeah. But the Air Force needed a fighter bomber to replace the aging F-111. Uh, uh, the aardvark. The aardvark. aardvark. Yeah. So they decided to modify the F-15 for air-to-ground missions as well. Pretty bad. Is that, where the, is that where the Strike Eagle came from? Yeah. Strike yeah. Eagle's the, when the E model. Yeah, designed e. to bomb, right? Yep. So the A model was 72. The B model was 73. The C model came out in 79. So it, it just continued and still to this day is still being modified yeah. to be to still be a high speed fighter. Um, I uh, highlighted one area. So the engines on this thing are outfitted with afterburner nozzles, which provide an extra kick of thrust when necessary. The afterburner simply injects fuel into the hot jet exhaust system. Oh, yeah. It ignites, cool. adding to the hot gases shooting out the back of the engine. At full force, the plane can get up to more than Mach 2.5, which is 1,854 miles per hour, gentlemen. She's kicking. Yeah. That's that, that, one, um, that one can take off and accelerate vertically. So they, they used to go fly and take off and just kind of fly above the flight line. And then at the end of the flight line, they would just go straight vertical and go up. Oh, that's nuts. It was, it was impressive. Yeah. Um, well, now, they, that ahead. one article we read about uh, how they proposed the Navy version of the F-15 because it was such a good plane. Remember so I was talking about that uh, a few weeks ago, but it couldn't carry that big Sparrow no, yeah, the, missile. Yeah, the Sparrow. Yeah, yeah. Was the Sparrow the big one? Uh, Sidewinder so. was the small one, and the Sparrow was the bigger one. And that was the deciding factor. Uh, well, that's what they said, yeah. Um, and now, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, too, we did that uh, article about them experimenting with putting, like, 12 missiles on it or whatever it is. Now. Yeah. Yep. So I guess they overcame that problem. What's really cool is when it got its Wizzo, the pilot could concentrate with the heads-up display that it put up there for just air-to-air -air combat. The Wizzo mm -hmm. barely looked outside the airplane. He was looking at um, uh, selecting, eliminating ground targets while the pilot concentrates on maneuvering the plane and fighting enemy aircraft. Both stations are housed in a sturdy bubble canopy on top of the plane, but his heads-up display in the back gave him the ability to monitor all the targets and select them while the pilot, you know, did air to air. Yeah. One of the things I, why I almost chose uh, the F-14, because I was reading on some of the avionics on the F-14, um, or at least the targeting stuff. They said the F-14, at least at the time that they was coming out, could target or could track 14 uh, bogeys and, and produce a firing solution on six of them. Wow! So, yeah. Oh yeah, and I was like, "God damn, that was." I mean, and that was in the late seventies. So, um, I would imagine when they added the Wizzo over to the F fifteen, that it would have probably similar uh, targeting ability. Yep. I wanted to talk about the armament real quick. Um, it's loaded up with weaponry that can take out almost every aircraft in existence. It sports. Oh eight. shit! Really? That's right. It sports eight. Air to air missiles of different designs. It can carry various combinations of the AIM 120 advanced medium range air to air missile. It's the AMRAM. Yeah. The AIM 9 Lima Mike Sidewinder or the AIM 7F Mike Sparrow missiles. So I don't think the Sparrow was the big one. All three missile types are designed to actively seek out their target. The AMRAM and Sparrow missiles are both radar guided. The AMRAM has its own radar unit and flight control system. 
God bless. Yeah, this thing is still top of the line and can fight most fighters in today's inventory. Wow, that's pretty cool. And it's it has been one of, uh, well, F-16, but it's been one of our longest fighters still in service. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I give a point yeah, for we, that. We, we we sold this thing to a number of countries, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the Israelis have used it to, to expertise, man. Uh, all our stuff, the Israelis have been the proving ground. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. By the way, the F-15 also had the same, I think, as the nose gun that you talked about on the F-4. It's the M-21 20-millimeter six-barrel cannon with 940 rounds of ammunition. It's not very much. So it's a couple bursts, I would imagine, right? I don't know. I don't know what the the rate of fire is on that thing. Yeah, I don't know either. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, just in bursts, so right? You know, it's just uh, in bursts. So, but I would imagine if an F fifteen uh, got to gun range, they'd be like, "Hey, we screwed up. We yeah, all this yeah. missiles we got <laughs> under our wing, we're right. screwed, man. Yeah. Distance. All right. So." Now the important thing, right? Let's read combat tallies. Oh, uh, here we go. That's right. Here we go. Mine's easy. Yeah, I know it's easy. Yeah, your, no, it's, yours is never lost. That is that's correct. True. In real world. That's that's another point for the F-15. Never yeah. has been lost. But what's your combat record? 101 victories and zero defeats. Well, it's pretty damn good. Pretty you damn definitely good. got me beat. <laughs> what are you talking well, the about? Problem, well, the F4. It's been shot down. It's it, been, it was in inventory by so many countries for well, so I know there's, long. It's been shot down a lot by ground fire. Right. Well, that's true, too. So And it, and it went through the invention of SAMs. Right. That's right. Right. So well, that's we had no that. countermeasure to that stuff. We had yeah. nothing to to do with, to do with that right we had to invent a whole we we invented the wizzo because of the wild weasel program Ooh, because that's... the f4 was getting shot down so much right right <laughs> so, you got me beat <laughs> well, but what's your what's the f4's tally um i don't remember marty honestly i'm 300 that, uh, 306 sent. victories all right. All right. They've lost 106. And then they've lost 500 <laughs> to ground <laughs> fire. So, but that's kind of, you know, that I don't, I don't, can't, can't count that. You know, can't count that. Yeah. So 306 I mean, and you've lost 106. 106. So that's pretty, that's pretty goddamn good for all of uh, that era. Right. Yeah. And with, with the vast jump in technology. Right. I mean, air to air guidance uh ground to air guidance all that stuff when was did coming uh, out when the f4 was in its prime when I, I i don't know i don't know if you know it's offhand but when did they come up with the radar guided uh ground ground surface to air missile that that was that's the in vietnam well it was oh so it was that era okay yeah, that whole era, like, and that's why. And so the they, wild weasel was designed to take out that radar that was guiding it was, those missiles in, right? It would or, give them a or, left. It was divided. The display was divided into four sections. It was front left or front right, front left, back, back left, back right, and it would just light up and oh, send shit. an alarm in that general area. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so they would pop up above ground cover to where radar would be able to pick them up. Yeah. And so one would be a guinea pig, and then the other one would get the alarm and try to launch on the ground site while the first wild weasel guys were dropping to the floor and trying to dodge Sam's. So they, they had to wait for the radar to light up to get a target yeah. lock on those guys. Right? Yep. They also flew with another aircraft, the Prowler, 
Yeah, the prowler. Yep. Oh yeah, they yeah. Come in behind them to take out the Sams once once they were launched. Yep. They were Those, prowler was an early jamming. Yep. Airframe also. Yep. I will give you the F 4s durability to take damage. Yeah, was pretty true. amazing and return. Yeah. Yeah. All that, right. That. I think we're done because the uh, F eighty six <laughs> achieved. 757 air Whoa. victories oh. against 103 losses in the Korean War. Wow. Damn. That's pretty good. That That's amazing. I, I was blown away when I saw that. That is crazy. Seven hundred. When, you, when you're flying up to meet in MIG Alley. Yeah. The, right, you know, right. 30 opportunities. Nobody in freaking Iraq or Iran wanted to fight us in an F-15. And when they did, we blow them out of the sky. Right. That's true. It's yeah, funny. True. There was actually two instances where Iran and I think one other country said they shot down an F-15, but there was no debris. There was no crash site. There was oh, no. They were just, <laughs> that they were just making it up. It. Yeah. They go set some tires on fire. They're like, that's where it crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to take credit for something that didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that if the F-15 is 102 and O. That's right. That's right. But you want to hear what my 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 uh, <laughs> big spade was to, to yeah. trump all this stuff? Because that article trump. was pretty cool to look at that one that you sent, Jake, about all the uh, victories and losses yeah. and, and compare by airplane. But yeah. if you count it up, that F-15, that's 102 and O. Yeah. There's only 38 kills by Americans. Well, that's, well, yeah. The Iranians killed a shitload in the ones we gave they them, or did. the Iraqis, whatever it was. All right, so well, I, Israel and the Israelis, Israel, man. Israelis killed like what is that, 42? And then Israel in Syrian war or border crisis killed 19. Yeah. Is you know, really the a ones, statement man. for you that's going to push the F-15 Eagle over the top? Over okay. 757 air victories from the F-86 Sabre? Absolutely. Doesn't All matter. Right. Let's it's hear it. Push this. It's going to push it over the top. Okay. 1986, Red Dawn. Oh, fuck. <laughs> the colonel was shot down. And Patrick Swayze, how'd you get shot down, colonel? He said there was five of them, and I got Four, god damn it. <laughs> Come on, man. That's an F-15 historic event. Oh. You remember? <laughs> Come on. Uh. Powers Booth was the colonel. Man, uh, Marty, he makes a good argument. That's a goddamn good argument. That's true. <laughs> I think based on the point in time for each aircraft, you probably couldn't pick a better aircraft at the time. You know, the F-4 during Vietnam. It was yeah. a well, the F-86, that, that's true. And that's what made tip me over to say in the F-15, because the F-86 was Korea War, and pretty much that was it, right? The F-4 was primarily Vietnam, and then we sold it to everybody else and their dog. So, uh, But the F-15 has spanned five decades now? Yep. And it's still in service? Still and it's still... Done. A premium fighter out there? Correct. Yeah. Uh, they just right. need to make a cool movie, like a better movie about it. <laughs> the Air Force can't do good movies, man. They've already That's shown true. them. You know? <laughs> what was Iron Eagle? Was that Air Force? That was a, yeah, 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 it was Iron, but it was an F-16. F-16. Yeah. That was, that why, was, do we, why do we both? Why do we all go? Yeah, it was an F sixteen. That that yeah. was that was Scott's whole point. The <laughs> F sixteen, the Fighting yeah. Falcon, and they called it Iron Eagle after the F fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> How dumb! Hey, uh, that that's what you dumb. get when you hire no military on your military movie. Uh, that was good. You're like, you don't even want to spell check this with run it by a pilot or nah. two. And they're like, nah, nah, nah. nah I think we know what we're talking about. We're movie makers. All right. I was on the fence uh until it's it's hard to deny um that the F15 has been around since the 70s 
50 yeah. years and it's still considered one of the best planes in the world. Um, never been shot down. Well, still and gone. powers, well, powers boot got shot down in it. <laughs> But he took four. But he took four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to hand it to the 15. I'll go to the 15, too. So, Thank you, gentlemen. Now, All if right, we Eric. have a recent war where we do air-to-air, the 15 is going to be trash. You uh, think? I don't know, man. This F-15, yeah. F model? No, no, no. We're, g- we're against, like... Oh, you're talking about the Russian ver like if we had an air to air fight. Oh, now you mean the, with a 15 the Russian... versus current Russian and current Chinese. But they don't have um, that many of them. Oh man. Well, and I will tell you this if their state of the art aircraft is like their state of the art tank, the Armada, <laughs> I'm not afraid of. <laughs> yeah. All right. This week F15 is our all pro selection, all military, all pro. I, I still don't know a name for it. All military selection. The F 15 uh, is our jet of choice. Right on. Yep. Um, Congrats. Thank you, sir. So who's, who's one? I got two. Oh, and, you got two, two just because know. I gave you two. I shouldn't <laughs> have ever given you the goddamn New Jersey. That was a, you that yeah, was you mistake. handed that to him. Now I it's did. going to his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, I picked the New Jersey and the F fifteen. Look at me, I'm Whoa. two. I'm two out of three. You space guys, <laughs> it easy for me. <laughs> oh, he's got to pull the space card in there. Yeah, exactly. Here we go, <laughs> bitch. Oh shit! All right, I think that's good for this week. On yeah, behalf was... of all of us here, I'd like to thank you for listening today. Please like, share, subscribe, and let us know how we did in the comments. And as always, make sure to download the next episode for more service headline news. Man, thanks for the week. I'll see you next week. Good stuff. Good call, guys. Hey, Eric, don't forget Valentine's Day coming up. You better right? order that jet fuel candle. <laughs> At your age, you're going to need all the help you can get, my friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, fuel candle. <laughs> it's worth a shot. <laughs> One last burst of flame. <laughs> Let me show you how we used to do it on the flight line. <laughs> <laughs> My wife will love that. Perfect. Right on. <laughs> Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. All right, guys. Have a good night. Uh, we'll catch you. Guys.